We are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year to everyone uh, who we haven't talked to yet. Uh, we are stoked. We are excited. Um, and of course, we are not alone. So welcome, everyone, to the first All Shift Happily Now meditation in 2024. And again, I'm not alone. And I see so many happy and cool people. And I'm so happy to do this. Um, First of all, let's welcome all our golden ticket winners. Um, we have Greg. Please, Greg, show, show, show what you wear. It's so cool. Hello, everybody. Got a nice winter sweater on here. It's the truth. It is the truth. That's, that's, that's so amazing. And nice backdrop. Thank you so much for okay. being here. Um, Daniela, I, I love you. Too. I have all my family here. They're going to enjoy us. We have all shift happily now and laugh to all you, all of you. <laughs> it's so cool. So cool. And uh, speaking about aliens, um, Elisa got a nice backdrop too. And you painted these. Hi, guys. I'm so glad to be here for the new year. And yes, I did paint these. This is my friend, my buddies, my friends. <laughs> That is so cool. Uh, Lisa, uh, without the Christmas penguin, but with a snowman. Hi to Canada. Hi, everyone out there. It's kind of getting late in the month, but happy 2024. Happy, happy, Hi. happy 2024. Uh, we got two new people. So we got two golden ticket winners. Actually, the first one, um, uh, well, he got this ticket from Lisa because Lisa actually won the last competition and she knew what the person uh, with the sandwich was holding. So, uh, but she also already got a golden ticket, so she gave it to Brett. I'm super happy to have you on, Brett. Hi. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this all day. I'm being, I want high vibrations, everyone. And Greg, man, I love that jumper. I mean, that is cool, bro. <laughs> So, yeah, sweet Lisa gifted me um, a golden ticket. You know, she gets them so easily. Christmas day, days as well. That's cool. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm buzzing for this. It's, it seems a long time since we've done one, so I'm excited. Thank you so much for being with us. And also, you rep represent the Cosmic Disclosure fan right. um, group on Facebook, uh, yeah. which is so cool, too. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I appreciate that, mate. So the second one is uh, actually living in Germany, um, and she got a nice answer to the last uh, little puzzle that we had. So, um, Monica, welcome, and uh, so glad that you join us here. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be with you, and I love you so much, all of you. I don't think you have any idea how much I love you. And I feel so good. So good. <laughs> yes. That is so sweet. It's super exciting to be with you. My Thank you so family. much for being with us. We're happy to have you. And um, already looking at all these happy faces is so cool. So, uh, but now let's let's welcome um, uh, all the cool speakers that we have uh, with us and not on Hawaii, <laughs> but in Florida, I guess, Sarah Brexman Cosme. Hi guys, I love you all so much too. There's so much love in this little community. Just love you all. So happy to be here. We love you too. That's so cool. Um, and of course we have Sarah Zula. Hi Sarah. Hi everyone, so good to see you. I'm so happy to be here and to like kick off the new year with our first meditation. This is so beautiful. And we have some exciting news, too, that we're going to talk about. So I can't wait to share it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I can't wait, too, because um, we have big, big news. And it's going to be revealed in a few seconds. But uh, last but not least at all, we have our shadow worker, Kedrich Olsen, is with us. Hi, Kedrich. Hey, hey, it's great to be here. I'm excited for this 2024. It's going to be an amazing year, and we're doing a great way to kick it off man that is that is very very true it's going to be an amazing year um a lot of exciting things to come this year and uh who, you know there are some some there's some stuff going on on this planet and i'm i'm very happy that all of us are we are all very prepared 
and I'm uh, really curious how this will go and what will happen. But first of all, I am super happy and we got to talk about this because um, this is major news, major, major news. This is going to be this year, 2024. Uh, Kedich Olsen, Sarah Brixman Cosme, Sarah Zula and Tim Tactics. We are going to do the very, very first All Shift Happening Now International Conference. I am, I am so freaking excited. I'm so freaking excited. Um, we actually went to Germany. Uh, we arranged a nice, nice spot for this. And uh, we want to take the chance to, well, just celebrate that with everyone and uh, also speak about some of the amazing content that we are going to do, um, which is so cool. So first of all, some of you might have heard the story uh, where I introduced a good friend of mine, a long friend of mine, to being six. And this place where the All Shift Happily Now conference is going to happen is actually in that very spot. So I hope everyone is ready for that. And we invite everyone in the community to have this conference with us. And I'm, I'm so, so, so happy about this. Um, Sarah has also seen some of the, uh, the spots there. So what's your impression, Sarah? Can you talk, talk a little bit about the, the ashram? Oh, the ashram is so beautiful. It's such a wonderful space to go. The energies are super light. And the room that we're going to be in is like, it's so perfect. They literally are giving us the best room we could possibly have for us to have this event. It has access to outside. So it's, it's just an, on another level. And it just feels so good there. Like, I can't imagine a better place for us all to come together and do this. And it's near the Exxon Stones, too, a sacred site that not many people know about. However, it's a powerful energy vortex. Like, I was staying in a place very close to there, and I got to spend some time there, and you can feel it. And it's so funny because it's a sacred site where... If you go, people are like treating it like a park. So there were like kids sledding and like I've never seen a sacred site that like had that. But there was also something so beautiful about that. You know, people were just enjoying it and walking around and feeling the energy. So I'm excited to be able to have this event at this special place in Germany, in Europe. Like there's not much out there like this in Europe. So I feel like it's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing, and I'm super happy about that, too. Not only because, you know, I've spent some time in Germany, so I know the place, but also because it is actually one of the highest spiritual places in Europe that there are. And it's directly connected to Stonehenge. Uh, it used to be the area where, you know, all the witches and all that magic happened. Um, it is also the place in the year where at certain times when the planet goes through a certain time and it's very compressed in its energies this is the place where you can make actual visual direct contact with being six and probably a lot of other different beings too but since uh we're gonna do this in october it's gonna be 17 to 20 i think i hope I hope, right. Okay, Sarah Zuda and Sarah Brexman are, are nodding. So I'm right here. Um, we're going to do this in October. We want to invite everyone here. We want to have a great, great, great celebration together. And since this is not the right time to actually make direct contact, we will still, still uh, make contact with Being Six. Uh, live in front, everyone's uh, I, I, we're going to do a very special ritual and we're going to do that with Kedrich. Uh, and I was planning for that so long and I'm, I'm so happy that we finally get to do this. Um, Kedrich is actually very, very well, very well uh, experienced in doing uh, seances and contact work. And maybe you can tell something about that, Kedrich. Absolutely. Seance is a great way for you to learn how to unlock your abilities to connect with the spiritual world. Because remember, we are spiritual and physical beings at the same time. And as a shadow worker, I see so many people with their abilities shut off from a younger age. And so seance is a great way 
to reaffirm that you are a spiritual being, that you have this spiritual connection. And we bring various tools like pendulums, like automatic writing and the Ouija board into this setting and that it, we set as a safe, sacred setting so that you can make communication, you can contact and ask the questions and get the guidance that you've been looking for. Seance is a wonderful tool to awaken your abilities. It's going to be so beautiful. I know it, Kadrick. And I think everyone on here is just as excited as me and all of us to be able to experience this together. And thank you for being willing to do this with us. It's going to be beautiful. So Tim's having some technical issues, but he'll be back before we know it. But Sarah, how, what are your thoughts about it? How are you feeling about it coming to Germany? All the things. Uh, I'm so excited because and there's so many people from Europe that want to get together, you know, so I think this is going to be really beautiful. And I love the space that you guys picked out. But what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to show some actual clips to trigger people's memories of actual memories of my clients very deep under hypnosis. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've learned people have discovered as far as like who you really are and how to activate your dormant DNA within you. And if you touch some of these sacred sites or go to these sacred sites, just by going there, DNA within your body starts to become activated. So you could activate your DNA just by hearing this information, going to these sacred places and connecting with the energy there. And I really want to help people actually access who they really are in this way. No big deal. <laughs> Yeah. Epic. So cool. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited for it. And I'm so excited you're sharing it. There's like this huge projector screen on the like on the front of the stage. And I just we've envisioned as we were looking at it, we're like, Sarah's going to share the coolest clips on there. So it's so <laughs> cool that that's like the first thing you said. So thank you for your work. And we're excited for it. Oh, and Kadrick, I know share if you wish but i know that you were talking about some of the energies you were picking up on the site um and you gave us some names of it and then it made a connection to what sarah was seeing in her books so it was just a really cool connection would you mind sharing that are you still picking up on that just the I'm energy still picking of the up on that. i'm still working through that i'm going through some of those energies picking up what's there and what i'm getting is a lot of ancient ancient energy you know before the Saxon period, before the Teutons, you know, way old, that there's something maybe Neolithic there, some Neolithic stuff. So it's very interesting energy. And of course, I haven't been there, but that doesn't stop us from reaching out energetically and connecting energetically because there's something to it. And I'm curious to explore even more. I don't know. Right now, my senses are open. My mind is open and I'm learning as we go. Oh, that's so exciting. And it actually matches something that we were doing some research on one of the main carvings that are on the site. And you can just tell like the bottom of the carving is ancient. There's a dragon. You can tell the wear is so much older, sort of like, I'm not going to give examples. I was going to talk about the Sphinx, but I'm not going to give examples for that. But the wear and tear on the bottom part is so much older. You can just tell by looking at it, by how much it's worn out. And then on top of it, there's a new carving of the crucifixion. And it's an ex such an old example of the crucifixion as well. You can tell just by uh, the type of sculpture it is and the type of drawings the people are on it. You can tell it's so ancient even as that, but it was put placed on top of the old carving. So I'm so curious what was there, but I've done a lot of research on resurrection sites and some ancient rituals in alignment with that. And a lot of the little pieces of it, like the way the stones are lined up with the solstice, really show that this definitely could have been, could have been an ancient resurrection site. So the energies there are powerful, needless to say. It's exciting. Very, very powerful. And thank you so much for holding on. I shouldn't be 
you know, unplugging my uh, Wi-Fi in the middle of a video call. <laughs> That's not a good idea at all. But anyway, we're back. Um, yeah, talking about this very, very special site. Um, we are going to have one day where we all are going to uh, the external stones. We're going to see this site. This has been used by the Germanic uh, tribes for centuries, longer than we know history. Uh, so we are going to dive into that. It has been altered many times, Christian symbolics. Um, people have put a lake directly uh, close to that ancient site, probably in order to make something with the energies. There's also a sarcophagus in the middle of this um, site. Uh, it's a weird feeling to lay down there. So only the brave can do it. <laughs> Whoever wants to do it can do it. Um, and well, obviously, the man who's like pre-designed to actually guide us through the Nordic and the Germanic uh, tales is uh, absolutely Kedrich Olsen. So I'm I'm super happy and thank you so much, Kedrich, that you're gonna uh, guide us through some of this knowledge. Absolutely, I'm definitely excited to do that, especially the history that's going on there and and you know the history of that region too and the people that were there and their beliefs their practices absolutely fascinated by that yeah and that's not gonna be all we're gonna have so many events it's gonna be awesome like this is in the middle of the most spiritual area in europe uh mostly unknown uh it has the biggest ashrams uh yoga ashram outside of india there are ten thousand people meditating and making yoga uh which is crazily cool um we're gonna we are going to be invited to join their program so on one day we're all gonna go into different directions and everyone who wants to join yoga classes can join one of the many 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 classes that are available there um, also something which is very unusual for conferences, usually uh, people are like left on their own and usually they, you know, take Airbnbs or something in the surrounding area. This time we are being hosted by the ashram itself. So the ticket will include the hosting, uh, the, the stay and which is personally my favorite, it's going to include the organic food. Uh, they're going to have <laughs> pretty, pretty great, great organic food, highest standards probably in the world. Um, very healthy, very healthy. So everyone who's into KFC and Pizza Hut <laughs> is probably not going to enjoy <laughs> the food. But everyone who likes really healthy spiritual food, uh, enhanced and enriched by the energies, um, they, these people care for the plants they harvest them and they make the food all on their own and every day we're gonna have this beautiful beautiful food together which is so cool and we're gonna enjoy the time and be together there uh we're gonna have some celebrations some music a lot of lot of stuff going on and i'm personally i'm i'm so freaking excited for that because Think about this. We started this movement one year ago, and now we are 10,000s of people, and we are going to do an international conference together in October in Germany. Uh, that is that's just nuts. That's just like incredibly cool. And I can't wait to do this with all of you. It's actually the very first time that I'm going to see Sarah Brexham Cosme. I've never yeah. seen you, Sarah. In real life. <laughs> In real life. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. You're gonna well, be sorry. So, I'm a goofball, so you're gonna regret it. I, I bet you are. So we're gonna have some other show elements and we are planning on doing like a, a, a fun evening together. Um like besides all the cool spiritual stuff, all the hands-on knowledge, all the the experiments that we're gonna do, like calling in being six and, and connecting to the spirits world on, on the spot. We're also gonna have uh, some cool, uh, funny moments where we're just gonna have, well, 
let's say it that way we're planning on doing like an open mic night or something where we just like spread some nice stories and that's going to be hilarious i see some people laughing thank you lisa <laughs> <laughs> and when we were at conscious life expo sarah spoke on stage she won an award at like the speakers event you won an award and sarah gave a speech on stage that literally i was like who is she she's like a stand-up comedian like i can't wait for you guys to see this side of sarah <laughs> <laughs> and Tim as well. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try that. I want to do it because I'm I'm actually you know in you know Germany. Germany is different. Germany always wants to see papers, even for open mic stand up uh, nights. <laughs> this is a real story. No, this this is real. There's like in my town there used to be an open mic night. Open mic. I'm, I'm quoting here, it says open mic. And I went there and I said like, hey, I wanna speak on stage. I got some funny stories to tell. And they were like, uh, do you got some papers, like comedy documentations? And I'm like, <laughs> So serious. How, right? <laughs> It's so wild. Anyway, just like we're gonna have this beautiful evening where we're gonna I, I imagine to you know having some slight jazz music in the background and then we just like uh spend share some beautiful stories and have a fun time. And besides that, have great food, uh have great experiences, all these events. I'm stoked. I'm I'm all in for that and I'm so 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 happy. And also seeing some of you people uh for the very first time not only sarah brexman but also all the people in the community that's gonna be magical that's gonna be magical well any everyone uh that is it uh for the news and over the next few weeks we're gonna share some more um the more we learn and the more we organize uh the more we are going to share with you um so that is what's up and uh what was that? <laughs> that was the sound. Anyway, um, I would love to dive into uh, a meditation with all of you. Um, and this is a special meditation because it's the first one in 2024, right? So uh, focus on that would be um, the upcoming shift. Uh, we have some news going on. Some of you, a lot of you who are in the star community already saw my video. Those who uh, are with me and, and Sarah Zula in the Ticket to Ride course, we talked about that very, very extensively, um, that the shift is actually speeding up very much. Uh, everyone is called to do their best and manifest and balance this. I have no freaking doubt at all that these people here in this community are and, and just think about this we are on the forefront and we are the most and the best prepared people on this planet i say this with a lot of pride but i also say this with a lot of thoughts about those people who have not prepared their population for the reality of aliens and consciousness and a mental universe and so i hope that this last year and we've done i see everyone nodding here all these we've done so much work and we've done so many meditations together and this is so important this is so important uh we've spread so much knowledge and i expect every one of you to go out and be there for your loved ones and for everyone in the community and beyond uh Right, because in the very moment when people realize, oh my God, we're not alone. There are other beings, and the universe is like uh, more, much more than it used to be. Um, they rely on you. You are the ones who can give them hold and can say, like, hey, we know it. We knew it. We knew it all along. Uh, welcome to this new world, and then give them a calm and good feeling. I hope. <laughs> So everyone, let's meditate together and uh, make this 2024 a great, great, great year and um, lead this earth into a new, new beautiful earth. And also before we start, let me see what's going on in the chat. I've, I've not been uh, on YouTube and here we go. I just want to say hello to some people in the community because we have 
hundreds of people here and this is so cool uh victoria is there uh all shift happily now sarah is uh sarah zella is saying so excited um uh Haley is in a wedding that weekend come on you should come to the conference that's that's <laughs> more important than i mean come on Get that, get the girl, whoever is marrying, get them to Germany and we do that. I, I bet Kedrich has some interesting uh, wedding ceremonies and could guide us through that too. <laughs> I've done a few Norse weddings in my time for sure. You have? Oh my God. Oh, Haley, yeah. look at that. We, we can do it on stage. Bring that, bring the people. We can have a Viking um, mm. yeah. I love that. By the way, if we're talking about that, because I'm curious, how does that look like? What what is the Viking uh, wedding look like? Uh, the man and woman are seated, not standing, but they're seated facing each other. The officiant is between. Uh, there is a calling of Thor, and for the blessing of the wedding, and then of course the hammer. Thor's hammer is a big part of this, and it's set in the lap of the woman to bless the fertility of the marriage. Uh, then the the bride and groom exchange gifts. Usually the man gives a woman a set of keys because in the Norse tradition, the woman owns the house and everything in the house. So those keys represents her prosperity, her abundance, and that she has the property, the house, she has rulership over that. And then sometimes a weapon of some kind, like an ax or a sword is given to the man as a sign of, here's how you protect the home. Here's what you do for that. There is an exchange of rings. It could be finger rings or it could be arm rings. You know, those are very traditional. And then O's made to each other. And then feasting and drinking afterward, you bet. Man, I see some women celebrating that very much. But guys, we gotta we gotta act. Oh my god, Greg, show it to us and, and say something so you're on the screen. I uh, I got the sword for Germany here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Max, right? Yeah, the Max, yeah, that's I got great. The Max, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> awesome. That is literally, I think, the best sweater ever. <laughs> like, oh, it's thank just you. the best. Thank you. <laughs> I, it is, it is, and and it has the grace on it. That's that's pretty cool too. So um, we also let's read some more comments. We have uh, Fernando Gomez from Colombia. Um, Nikki Lucia, by accident, I saw this live video. So happy to see everyone and these beautiful people. What a happy accident that we have you. Thank you for joining in. Uh, much love from Bellingham, WA, whatever WA is. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Sarah Zella, who's, who, Goosebumps. Yeah, we have Goosebumps too. Um, I missed the explanation of this event. Will you do a quick <laughs> recap? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> look at our stories. We're basically doing a, an ocean happily now conference in October. It's going to be dope. It's going to be fun. Um, what's the name of the site? Uh, well, the, the site is called Extern Stones. So, uh, look it up. It's really interesting. It's like, who has place these stones there. These are megalithic stones. They are huge. And it's, it's, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. And it has carvings in it. And it's been used for so many, many years. Uh, Sue from Canada. Hi to Canada. Lisa is probably smiling. <laughs> oh, and Greg. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, for sure. You're from Canada, too. <laughs> Uh, Necto, approximate location. Uh, it's in Germany, close to um, uh, Paderborn. Uh, just Google extern stones. Uh, it's great. Um, Laura, I love Kedrich. He is so cool with a heart. <laughs> Kedrich, you got to say something. I'm, uh, otherwise, you're not on the video. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I am like disappearing. <laughs> Uh, Ricky Lee, where can you, where can we get tickets? Um, we haven't set up the. It's all new. It's all new. It's brand new. We've been to Germany uh, a few days ago. We managed to get the ashram in as a collaboration partner. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. This this is like literally happening. This guy, and just 
this is so incredibly he used to be um a uh a discipline of shivananda which is like a yoga guru from india Kerich is nodding um and he basically said to this guy and he's a german guy and he told him just like i have a vision of you you should be doing an ashram and it's going to be great so he went back to germany and he set up an ashram and at only one over time it got another one and another one and another one and i think there are like four or five huge ashrams in germany in in all directions and hundreds and hundreds of yoga schools coming from this guy and he has like on this main place he got ten thousand people uh that are doing yoga there and it's like the biggest it became the biggest ashram in the world outside of india and all of this happened just because one person said to another person i think i have a vision for you you should be doing that and he did it he pulled it off and he made this legacy and it's amazing and we're going to have him uh on the podcast on the shifter podcast very soon too which is so cool um Hedy says Tim got to got to bust out, out his musical skills. Well, who knows? Uh, Cosmo Girl says love Sarah. Her work is amazing. Um, both Sarah's works are amazing. Whoever is meant here. Uh, Rosie Clark, hi from South Australia. Well, thank you so much, Rosie, for waking up at 4 a.m. in the morning. That is amazing. Um, Tanya is asking, what's the weather like in Germany in October? Well, that's easy. It's always gray in Germany. Great. <laughs> if you like the great, the Uh-oh, it cut out. In, German, who in Germany, will it be? Um, it's in Kirchheim. No, it's in uh, close to Paderborn, the external stones. Um, pretty famous. It's very, I mean, think about this. This has been used for thousands of years by the Germanic uh, tribes. It has been used um, by the, the witches. All the, everything you know about witches, this is the place. This is where the the the, the witch hunt uh, originated. These people gathered together there, and they had this last stand of spiritual activation and try to escape from the witch hunt. This happened there. There are some weird and wild spiritual energies, and I'm so happy we have a shadow worker. But also, there's like light energies everywhere too. So it's gonna be and and I mean the ashram with ten thousand ten thousand people. Um, doing meditation there every day, twice a day. Um, that is just like a source of good energy too. Okay, hello from Northern California, California Diana, and um, so many other comments. Victoria is coming from New York City, from Hawaii. My goodness, even more people from Germany. Uh, someone said Greg has the best, <laughs> the best, uh, uh the best wearable that is true <laughs> jumper that's the the name right honolulu hawaii um more people asking about the weather in germany um portugal uh katya is coming from portugal that's so cool um so nice michigan cape town south africa can you just believe that this is this is happening in front of eyes so many people all around the world i'm 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 super happy for that okay everyone at home and everyone here let's do the meditation together um and make this year an awesome year together so just get ready for this meditation wherever you are um take this opportunity it's so great that we're here together and take some relaxing breath in and out and get yourself ready make yourself aware that you are one embodiment of the all creator the one source the one being that is the first creator of all creations make yourself aware of that and you are directly connected to this being you are actually one 
embodiment of this being. And together and by this movement and by the All Shift Happening Now community, we bring together so many thousands and thousands of these aspects, like a huge, huge puzzle. And it's growing, and growing. And the more we connect, the more we can influence our timeline. And that's what we do, especially for 2024. So with each new breath, sink into this meditation. Keep your eyes closed and focus on your third eye in the middle of your forehead. And with each inhale, try to inhale through your third eye. And with each exhale, try to bring energy out of it and connect with the energy around you and all these other thousands and thousands and thousands of beings in our community. Because together we can and we will and we do balance and we do influence this timeline that we're on together and make it a happy timeline. So con connect yourself further and further. And the more you connect yourself, the more you feel connected to this community and held by this community and the joy and the excitement that comes from this is so good, it's so great. So take a few more breaths in and out and connect more and more with all these beings, these beings in Hawaii, in South Africa, even in Australia, Europe, Germany, England, everywhere, America, South America. There are people of our community, our growing community, all around the globe. The more we connect to each other, the stronger this net gets. And now make yourself aware that you yourself are a field. You yourself are creating this reality. And you yourself and everyone in this community are vital parts of what's going to happen on this planet. And because we take this opportunity, because we do meditate, we are a big, big portion of who gets to decide what's happening. There are millions of people on this planet, but millions of people are unaware what they can do with their minds. And they have not prepared as much as you do. So. Become aware of this responsibility and become aware of this great, great mission that we're on together. And then put in the energy and put in the mental energy. The more mental energy we put into this, the more we focus our minds together into this, the more mental mass is going to be created. And the more mental mass we are going to create, the further and further these shifts are going to happen, the more these manifestations are going to happen. So with each breath in, concentrate on your third eye and breathe it in through your forehead. And with each breath out, connect to this community, connect more to it and bring loving energy to it. It is so exciting and so beautiful to be in here together and to do this together with this community. So let's bring this energy and these emotions to the world, wherever we are. There are people on each and every continent just in that very moment connecting with you and you are connecting with them too. And we together are creating and balancing this timeline for us, for our loved ones, and also, also for the millions of unprepared beings that rely on us in that matter. So become aware of this great, great task, this great, great mission, and how important you are in this very moment on this planet. Whatever you do, just by being here, by investing this time, by bringing your energy into this, you are making a happy shift possible for you, 
for your loved ones, for everyone on this planet. You came here to do this, very, very likely, very likely. And you have these people's back whenever the moment of revelation is going to come. You are there. And these beings need you more than ever. So connect further and further with these beings, this grown community. Invite other people, more beings into this community. The more beings we are, the more we can actually leave a big, big imprint on the timeline. The more we can actually create and alter and balance this timeline. There are millions of people from the Being Six family. We're all here to do this job. This is what we committed ourselves to. So with each new breath, flow more and more into this awareness. Feel empowered, but also feel the responsibility into this the importance of what you do and what we do together as a community of happy shifters. And with each new breath out, bring this loving energy through your third eye into this world. And now fill 2024 with all your loving thoughts with everything that you wish this planet, that you wish for this planet to happen. Think about how this world is gonna improve, how we can make new friends when these worlds open up. Welcome in other friendly beings and other friendly dimensions that can help people on this planet, that can help guide this planet and also make the people that are still unaware of what is going on in this universe in real time make these people through your mental power make them welcome these beings see them as the friends that they are when they are friends because the universe relies on community and the more friendly beings and the more best practices we attract the better the outcome for this planet and its civilization. So with each new breath in, relax and become the full power and the full potential, become aware of all of this. And with each breath out, send your loving thoughts into the timeline for 2024. Welcome in all these friendly, productive, and healing energies. And also welcome all the beings in all Terran groups that are here to actually guide and heal and balance this planet, because there are millions and millions of them in this community, in other groups, speakers that do their job, there are people in even in agencies and groups that are good people and that are knowing that we all that they want for their families and for their loved ones and for their own loves and for their own lives they want this planet to to survive and to to be a healthy and beautiful planet so send a strong welcome and make it more than don't don't depend it on any type of religion or group or whatever just make it depending on the energies all friendly beings are welcomed and now put all the good thoughts and whatever is on your heart and on your mind put that into your thoughts too and while we do this I pass this on to Sarah Brexman. Thank you. So let's just breathe ourselves deeper into ourselves. And imagine you can breathe up through your feet, through your inhalation, 
Breathe up into your feet. Breathing all the way up into your chest. Breathing up all the way into your third eye. And when you breathe up all the way to the crown of your head, raise your shoulders. And then as you drop your shoulders, sink deeper into yourself. And just do that again. Breathe into your feet, up your legs. Breathe all the way up into your stomach, into your chest, all the way up into your third eye, to your crown chakra, raising your shoulders, and just sink deeper into yourself feeling so good, so loved, so supported. And now imagine or visualize a waterfall in front of you. And this waterfall is crystal clear and sparkling. And imagine you can step into this waterfall and it washes away any tensions, any worries, any thoughts, as it cleanses you and gets you ready to go even deeper into yourself. And as you step out of this waterfall, now imagine you're walking into a beautiful beach scene as you look around at the ocean and this beautiful white sand Perhaps you can see palm trees swaying. Just pick a spot in this beautiful healing beach scene. Now imagine or visualize that the sun above your head has a color or colors to it. Now feel or imagine this beautiful light entering through the top of your head and feel your head responding as this beautiful light flows from the top of your head down through your body, sending love and healing. Let this light be very strong as it floods your body with this healing light healing because it gets rid of illness anywhere in your body. It is also relaxing light, bringing you to an even deeper state of peace within yourself. Let this light be very strong as it floods your body, heals you, and sends love through your whole body and feel the beautiful, healing, loving light now enter into your heart, healing your heart at all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Feel the supportive and loving light gently healing your heart and feel your heart responding to this beautiful, loving light and feel your heart gently pumping this love and this light through your whole body so that it touches every cell, every tissue, every fiber of your body and floods it with love and healing. And now feel this beautiful light surround the outside of your body, healing your skin, protecting you and wrapping you even deeper in a beautiful state of peace and serenity, so safe, so protected. Now feel the beautiful loving energy flowing through your body. Feel your body responding to this loving energy as it starts to rebalance all of your chakras. Feel your chakras becoming online as you are becoming more of a radio transmitter 
to your divine higher consciousness. Feel each chakra starting to spin correctly, rebalancing, coming back online, transmitting beautiful energy, and feel yourself totally in alignment. Now imagine or visualize the higher consciousness, any loving beings, your divine essence flowing down through all the chakras, coming into your body. And now you can ask your higher consciousness any questions you have. What is your purpose in this life? And just trust. Don't analyze what comes up. What are you here to do? How can you best serve your purpose? What kind of advice does your higher consciousness have for you? Is there anything you're not doing that would benefit you tremendously to do now? What kind of rituals or techniques could you implore into your life that would benefit your life? How can you be your ideal self? And feel free to ask any other questions. Possibly, how can you live more in harmony with this earth? What does this earth What would this earth love it for you to do? How can you connect with the earth? How can you best connect with your higher consciousness? Allow all the answers to come. Try not to analyze or judge what comes up. Now imagine or visualize there's a mirror in front of you and the reflection of if yourself in this mirror is your ideal self, the highest version, the highest timeline for you, where yourself actualize, where you've become a master of yourself. The ideal version of yourself is in this reflection of you in this mirror. And just look at this ideal version. Be very detailed as you create this ideal version of yourself. What does this ideal version of you do? What kinds of habits does this ideal version of yourself have? Be very detailed. What practices does this version of yourself do? What foods does this ideal version of yourself eat? Now, when you're ready, step into this reflection and feel yourself integrating and becoming one with this ideal version of yourself, fully in alignment with this since you have done the previous exercise. You are now your ideal self and there is nothing that could ever rob you of this as you sink into the knowing of your ideal self as you are your ideal self. Now, as this version, this powerful version that you are in alignment with your divine essence, I want you to just imagine or visualize your whole ancestral line, every single person that has ever come before you, your parents, your grandparents, going all the way back. And I want you to send healing from your heart through your ancestral line and watch this affecting them, sending them healing, as you are the leading edge, the leading ancestor, you'll here to heal your ancestral line, flooding them with healing and watching them respond. And now if they have any messages for you, 
Allow yourself to be open to these messages, how they appreciate you, how loved you are, how brave you are coming in at this time, any other messages they have for you. And you can also send healing to all the future generations, everyone that will come after you, flooding the future generations with love and healing. And imagine or visualize you can fully heal yourself, allowing yourself full self-forgiveness, love and acceptance, understanding how appreciated you are, how powerful you are, how brave you are coming in at this time as this master soul. Now you can just slowly walk back to that waterfall going back under the waterfall, cleansing you, sending you any healing, activation, and just feeling the whole, whole divine blessing, of the universe just flowing into you through this waterfall. And feel your body, your mind, your soul responding, feeling so grateful for yourself, feeling loved and appreciated. And you can send love from your heart to everyone in this community, sending love to the universe, to all the higher consciousness, the loving divine beings helping the planet now, and feel them all sending love back, back to your heart. And then with that, I'll pass it on to the shadow worker. Thank you so much. That was very beautiful, very powerful. Ah, and I'd like for you to continue being in this place, being connected, being relaxed. And we're gonna play a couple little games of exploration and awareness. The first one that I would like you to do is imagine that you're able to create a ball, a ball of light, a ball of energy hovering right before you. It could be any size you wish. It could be any color you wish. But every time you breathe out, you breathe energy into that ball. And so that ball becomes a little bit stronger, a little bit brighter. And because we're doing some shadow work, let that ball feel like a little bit of tension, maybe even a little bit of stress, maybe even a little bit something uncomfortable. And every time you breathe into that ball, you feel that tension, that stress, that uncomfortable energy just build a little bit more and a little bit more. And now imagine that ball just bursting, the energy dissipating, the energy draining away. Notice that feeling of relief. Notice that feeling of relaxation. Notice that feeling of flow again. I just want you to be aware of that contrast for now. And again, connect with your sense of sacred. And to help with this, I wonder if you can imagine a time or a place or remember a time and a place where you were connected to some sacred energy. Could have been any point in your life, could have been anywhere. But just be aware of that sacred energy. Notice how it feels. And every time you take a breath in, that sacred energy flows into you. That sacred energy becomes a part of you. Continuing your experience of connecting to your authentic self. 
augmenting it, empowering it, strengthening it. And with this connection to the sacred and with this awareness of your authenticity, I wonder if you could imagine a point in the near future where you want to stand in your own truth. You want to stand in your own power. But maybe something gets in the way. Is it a thought? Is it an emotion? Is it a belief? And just for now, be aware of that thought, that emotion or belief. And breathe into it, just like we did with that ball. Make it a little bit stronger, a little bit more uncomfortable. And allow yourself to have some awareness of what this thought, this emotion, or belief is. If you can put some words to it, describe the thought, name the emotion. In your mind's eye, in your mind, say the belief to yourself. And breathe into it again. Make it a little bit stronger. Build that tension. Build that stress. And allow yourself a moment of gratitude. Knowing that this thought, this feeling, this belief helped you in some way in the past. It helped you to become the person you are right now. And it's making itself known because it's time to let it go. It's time to release it. And just like with that ball, let it burst. Let it flow out of you. Let its energy fade away. Feel that sense of relief, that relaxation come back to you. As that sacred energy that you're feeling flows into that space, feeling and surrounding that space where you felt that whether you felt that little shadow, the sacred energy fills that space. Let's do this again. Is there a time in your recent past where you tried to stand in your power? You tried to stand in your truth to express your authenticity. And maybe it was shut down. Maybe you were shot down. Something cut you off from it. And again, be aware of how that felt. Be aware of the thought that was coming with that. Be aware of the belief. Sometimes these beliefs are like, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not capable of this. Sometimes the belief is like, oh, this stuff must not be true. Nobody else is believing it, so it must not be true. But yet, why am I feeling it? Why am I experiencing it? Sometimes the thoughts can be like, well, who am I to be the one receiving this? Who am I to be the one doing this? If you've experienced those thoughts, those feelings, those beliefs like that, allow yourself just for right now to feel it. Breathe into it. Make that tension a bit stronger. Make the stress a little bit stronger. It's okay to be aware of it, to bring it to light. Name it. Understand it. Be aware that in that moment, this feeling, this thought, this belief was trying to protect you, was trying to help you in a way that you learned to keep yourself safe. And because of that, allow it some gratitude, knowing that it was helping you. Literally say to it, thank you for keeping me safe. Thank you for bringing me to this point in my life where I am right now. Thank you for allowing me to be aware of you. And with that gratitude, the tension, the stress, the uncomfort bursts. Feel that relief. Feel that flowing again. Feel that flowing of sacred energy flowing into you, your own authenticity, your own strength your own power, your own truth. 
And now imagine a point in the future where you have to stand in your power, you have to stand in your truth, and you are no longer burdened by these shadows. They are no longer blocking you from having that flow of authentic self. You're free to have the flow of your highest being. You're free to have that flow of sacred energy. And in your mind's eye, imagine that scenario, how it plays out, where you're able to stand in your truth. You're able to stand in your power. Feel how bold that feels. Feel how good that feels. Feel that truth flowing through you, that strength building you up. Because you know you're right. You know this is the best thing for you to do and that it helps others because it's coming from sacred source. It is your will. It is your purpose. It is your connection to your own higher being flowing through you. And it is in every way good. And so are you. So tap into that feeling now. As that situation plays through, how it makes you feel. With that sense of knowing that you were able to stand in your truth. What it was like to be able to stand in your power. To let your own authenticity shine to the highest degree. And have a powerful impact on you. The environment around you and the people that you're interacting with. Feel that feeling. Breathe into that feeling. Twice as strong. Five times as strong. Ten times as strong. And let that energy flow into every fiber, every cell, every part of your body, your being, infusing your psyche and soul with this energy, knowing that it will be a guide for you through everything you do. And any time you need to stand in your power, any time you need to stand in your truth, just take a deep breath, feel this energy, knowing that it is infused as a part of you. You carry it with you everywhere you go, and it's just this easy to tap into it. And you'll find that it's very easy to connect to your authenticity, to speak your truth to the benefit of you and everyone else. And with that, I pass on to Sarah Zula. Hail and thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Kedrick. So let's keep our eyes closed and stay in this beautiful meditative energy as you sink deeper and deeper into yourself. And breathe and soften and relax. Open body, open mind, open heart. And we're going to stay on this theme of playing a game. And we're going to play a game of creation. We're going to play a game of creation to bring forth the most beautiful 2024 that exceeds your wildest dreams. To begin this game, I want you to remember a moment where something became manifest. It could be as simple as something that became manifest like angel numbers in a row and you just got so excited to see so many in a row. It could be something that manifests that you've really wanted for a long time, but it happened so much greater than you could have imagined. I want you to bring up a memory of something that manifest in the past that gave you the feelings of awe and wonder and excitement for life that remind you of the magic to be alive. Feel into the feelings associated with that memory. And like you've done before, turn up the dial on those feelings. 
make those feelings of awe and wonder at the beauty of existence, at the beauty of life, make those feelings even stronger. And breathe those feelings into every cell of your body. Feeling surrounded by these beautiful feelings of awe and wonder and excitement. From this energy, now begin to consider something that would be so cool to happen in 2024 in your personal life. And stay in this energy with me. This energy of wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be just so exciting to happen? Wouldn't that be so cool? Stay in this playful energy of wouldn't that be awesome? As you imagine up this beautiful occurrence into your reality, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be really cool to happen? And with this energy of what you're bringing into your reality now, I want you to feel how amazing it would feel to be that you now. How would you sit on this meditation right now with that already being done? How would you close off this meditation as the you that it's already done? How would you walk? How would you talk? How would you wake up tomorrow morning as the you where it's already done? Breathe that energy into your heart and stay in the energies of wouldn't that just be amazing? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be beautiful? And as you feel into those energies even more, Begin to tune into the energy of gratitude. Gratitude for yourself. Gratitude for the universe. Gratitude for this beautiful thing already occurring in your life. And breathe and soften and relax and simply let it go. Let it go knowing it's already done. And now we're going to play one more game of creation. Begin to tune into what would be really amazing to occur for Earth in 2024. What is something that is on your heart that you feel like would be so cool, so beautiful, and stay in these frequencies of awe and wonder? What would be so cool, so beautiful, so amazing to occur for Earth in 2024 and all the people involved with Earth, all the beings involved with Earth? What would be so cool to happen? Tune in to how you feel as a being in the energies of that already happening. How do you live? How do you walk? How do you talk? How do you be in a world where that's already done? What are some subtle things that you know would shift in your personal reality with that already being done? Feel into the beauty of this occurring and send your gratitude out for all that had to occur, for all the things that had to come into place for this to be done. Send your thanks and gratitude out for this occurring.
and let it go. It's already done. And take a moment to bring your awareness to the center of your heart now. And tune into the connection of all the beings that are here now together meditating and how special and beautiful that really is. And with your awareness, with your intention, begin to bless the personal manifestations of all the beings on this meditation now. Bless their personal manifestations. May their gladness be full. May it happen far beyond what the, far beyond what they could have even imagined. Bless the manifestations of the other beings on this call. And now take a moment and bless the collective manifestation that the beings on this call created. Bless them, bless their manifestation that they get to experience an earth that they are dreaming of now. Bless their manifestations. May their gladness be full. And begin to bring your awareness and all of your energy back to the center of your heart. And take a moment and bless yourself. Let yourself know how proud of you you really are. Give yourself more credit for the being that you are, for all that you've been through and all that you're doing. You deserve it. And bless your manifestations with the energy of awe and excitement and wonder because all that's left now is for you experiencing the magic of how it all unfolds and getting ready to come back to this call feeling grounded in this moment now open your eyes with that excitement and awe and wonder to get to experience the magic of how it all unfolds as we get ready to pass this end of this meditation back to Tim for a beautiful collective, all shift happily now. Thank you all so much. Man, this was beautiful. Thank you so much, all of you. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the very first all shift happily now um, meditation and manifestation for 2024 and bring all the beautiful energies and everything that we've manifested so much today, bring this into this. And when you say that, don't think about your neighbors, wherever you are in the world, just make it, vocalize it and make the room really vibrate. And let's do it together in three, two, one. All Yes. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. How did you do that, Brad? I am Great. glad you do that. <laughs> I updated my operating system this week, and uh, thank you, Apple. Oh. <laughs> oh. Man, I love that. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Uh, this is so wonderful. And thank you for spamming the chat with so many All Shift Happily Now things. Uh, I got to say, Alp Edge Yeltsin uh, has sent us about 10 euro um, through the chat. Thank you so much. I didn't know oh, that wow. is possible. This is very generous and cool. Um, and he's also sending two questions. Is monoatomic gold healthy for DNA activation? I don't know that. I give I the... Do. <laughs> yes, I forward that to Sarah Brexman. Okay, well, recently I've been learning a lot about monatomic gold because a lot of my clients under hypnosis remember that it's located in all these ancient sites. Like even under the Sphinx, when people are looking deep under the Sphinx, they'll find 
white powder that I've come to understand as monatomic gold. So my clients that remember working with the Knights Templar or being the Knights Templar all use monatomic gold. So essentially, it actually can revitalize the body. It's one of these tools that we're not taught about, but it's been hidden from humanity because it is so powerful. It's actually hidden because they didn't want armies to get a hold of this monatomic gold. Now, I don't know which one is the best, like you'd have to experiment with yourself, but it's been talked about so many times in these in this ancient history. It's found under these places. It's supposed to reactivate and revitalize your body. Wow, okay, that is amazing. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, that's That's cool. And also, I love this feature. And also, Up Edge um, said, is Ra being six? Um, thing about this is that the community is saying that a lot of the, um, the knowledge and wisdom that comes from being six is also uh, found in Dolores Cannon books and also in some other books and also in the book uh, where they talk about Ra as being uh one of the et beings and um i, I don't quite know uh i, I only learned from uh, about these books since i'm in the community uh i haven't heard about dolores cannon before that um before sarah brexman yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i guess i mean uh, a lot of this information is is like i i see it in a way that it's like affirming uh, this information. It's it, it's actually incredible to me to to learn that so many of these information are also given to Sarah Brexman and they are also in the books of um, Dolores Cannon and that should show us that all of this is very, very real uh, and yeah, it's, it's worth a, a good read. And uh, I someone, I mean, uh, Alexandra, I don't know if she's in the uh, in the chat right now, uh, she was um, on the Italy first, very first Italy trip that Lisa also attended. Um, she gave me a book uh, from, um, you know, coming from or written by Dolores Cannon. Uh, I yet have to read it, but hopefully I find some time in the future. So, uh, well, Ra, like according to my clients, Raw came from was is basically like this consciousness that remembers. Um, one of the stops they were on was Venus, apparently, and they came during um, some of the ancient Egyptian civilizations to start spreading information about their law of one. They did contact um, Akhenaten, Akhenaten and started making direct contact with him because he was part of the survivors of Atlantis, and they were able to use his DNA to make this kind of contact. But according to to like, it seems like what you talk about with being six, I believe, I don't know, because I don't know being six, that being six is us, just in a different dimension. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think that too, especially when being six said that they have sent 500 millions uh, of their own people onto this planet and they got to find themselves and then we can, you know, uh, do this all together. That is like very, very strong indicator for me that we're all part of this and also there's so many different civilizations involved and, and beings and coming from all these different timelines bringing them all together and making it a unified timeline that is like a strong indicator for me well um Alp Etch Yeltsin, I hope I, I'm pronouncing that correctly. It sounds Turkish to, Turkish to me. Uh, since I couldn't answer these questions, thank you. Thank you very much for the 10 euros and thank you for uh, sending that to us. Uh, I'm going to buy some ice cream for Sarah Brixman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually like that feature. It's kind of cool to answer some questions. Um, and yeah, we've we've got so my my goodness, there are so many cool comments in the chat. Um, thank you so much for participating and for being with us. Um, and as always, the last words belong to the golden ticket winners. So uh, whatever is on your mind, whatever you want to share for 2024, maybe for the All Shift Happily Now International Conference, which is so cool, uh, just go ahead and. Whoever wants to say something, just just do it. 
Or so, if you have questions about the jumper that Greg is wearing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll send a link. <laughs> uh, the conference. Are, are you saying that we will hear from being six at this conference? Well, we don't know yet, but the idea is that we want to make contact uh, in in real time with everyone. And I had this on my mind for way too long with Kedrich since I've seen him using uh, certain techniques in order to connect with higher dimensions and other spirits. And basically in the last call that I had with uh, Sarah Brexman, Sarah Zula and Kedrich, they were asking me to, to make contact with being six. And that is only happening in a certain you know time at the end of the year when the energies are compressed at equinox but i thought like this is on my mind for so long so let's do it let's do it all together let's call in being six and see if we can receive messages and whatever comes through this is going to be awesome and maybe Kedrich, you can explain some more uh, uh about these techniques ultimately what it is is learning to understand the veil between worlds you see we hear so much about the veil like when you go to a cemetery the veil is thinnest when you have uh, new year's eve halloween Valpurgis knocked one of my favorite holidays Valpurgis knocked the veil is the thinnest or when you do seance we thin the veil we lift the veil we open the veil part the veil whatever that is but really there is no veil there is no veil between worlds. The spirit world, our world, the energetic realms, the various layers of density, they're all the same thing. They exist everywhere all the time. There are spiritual and energetic beings around you all the time. It's just we say the veil is up, the veil is thick as a means for us to tune out, to tune it away, to block it. And when you know that, when you know that you are the veil, which is what we do in seance, we lift the veil, you are the veil, you are allowing yourself to tune in, you're allowing yourself to be aware of and communicate and remember similarities attract and perpetuate. So when you move yourself into a higher frequency, when you connect to your authenticity, when you connect to sacred energy, when you connect to that higher vibe, those are the kind of beings that you're connecting with and communicating with. And so when we work with higher level beings, of course, we set setting setting to be sacred space, but it's more about getting ourselves tuned to a higher frequency to be aware of what that connection is and allowing the mind to be open and receptive and then to be able to communicate to the brain so that the brain can now process that information in a linear way that makes sense. So it's a combination. It's a little bit of a skills building of being open and aware, receiving intuitive information, which is non-linear and energetic, but then converting that, transducing it into linear, concrete information that can be communicated and understood by other people. So it is a little bit of a telephone game, a little bit, but that's sort of the process that we do, just in a nutshell. I just sort of took the whole stuff and condensed it a little bit to help better understand a little bit here. Wow. I love this. I love this. And I had this on my on my mind for so long. So I'm so happy uh, that you're doing this with us, Kedrich. And it's also going to be, I mean, come on, imagine that we are hundreds of people in the room and we do this all together in, uh, on a big screen too. And, and we just do this live. This is going to be awesome, going to be epic. And uh, the good thing about this is everyone has the room inside of the ashram. So it's going to be like a major big sleepover party. <laughs> like No one's got to travel anywhere. We're going to be at the same spot. So loading up and charging up with these energies uh, and seeing each other and the next day going to have organic food together. Uh, and having all these amazing events is going to be so cool. And meeting everyone is going to be great. So, Greg, thank you so much for the question, too. Anyone else? Uh, does anyone else want something, want to say something? Elisa, Daniela, Brad, Lisa, <laughs> morning. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, hey, during the meditation, that was fantastic guys you really guided us beautiful and i'm not sure if i was the only one but i had major third eye activation going on it was literally like so i really enjoyed it and everyone at home meditating with us and connecting with you it's so beautiful and 
I'm so thankful to be part of this community, this family. You know, it's great to have found you all again. And thanks, really. And um, that's it, really. Just a bit of love. So I just want to add that in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad. We're, we're happy to have you. And um, it's great that you, this is the first time that you're here. So uh welcome and and thank you so much and also uh gotta read this comment because that is way too cute uh ashley um texted that and asked the chat if if she's the only one who cried the whole time um i had a tear in my eye and natalie also answered answered that um she wasn't definitely not the only one um so yeah it got emotional Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I think this was a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful evening with everyone. And I'm always so happy to see everyone here. It's, it's a growing, growing family and, and community. Um, lots and lots of beautiful stuff to come. Um, and I'm, 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 I can't wait. I'm so excited for all of this and probably uh, even more excited to <laughs> see all of you very, very soon. So... <laughs> true thank you so much for tuning in uh sarah sarah kedrich uh and all golden ticket winners thank you so much for being here on the call and everyone on youtube and in the live thank you so much into the world all should happen now and bye thank you guys <laughs> see you later bye bye bye, bye guys <laughs> So I wait for you to laugh.